Yeah, that's a big thing, especially for the Fighting Illini. They returned all five of their starting players from last year's WBIT championship team. For the Beavers, on the other hand, this team is made up of a lot of new faces. Players acquired via the transfer portal, some freshmen, very different roster makeups. Yeah, really fun to see that front court, Kelsey Reese and Sila Heidi down low. And what those two have been able to do, players that put in their time here with this program. Reese, a transfer from Utah in her second season with the Beavers. Heidi has been around as well with these Beavers and players that are seeing a real uptick here. Should play a prominent role tonight as Kendall Bostick and Heidi get ready to leap for this ball as we get underway. State Farm Center rocking here on this Friday night. Oregon State controls the tip as Kennedy Schuler gets into the offense. A lot of height is the first thing you'll notice for this Beaver team. Schuler decides to take it back out. Heidi has the post up down low, mismatch, but instead a long range effort from Ferreira and it tumbles out. Loose ball foul. Like you were saying earlier, Ethan, a lot of height for this Beaver team. That's something that Shauna Green touched on her media availability. She knows that her team is going to have to play big and get down there with these big Beaver players. Ferreira back out to Schuler. Schuler, a fun story. Major uptick in playing time. A stud soccer player as well in high school. She's come a long way now in her sophomore season. And on the interior, there is Heidi. She's shooting 74%. That's fourth in the nation, but can't get that to go. Quickly in rhythm, Bryant off the mark. Yeah, that's something you might see the Illini do pretty often here tonight. They love to get out in transition and try and get those easy, fast break baskets. That one couldn't quite fall for Bryant. Schuler lost her dribble, flings it inside, and Reese missed the bunny, scrapping for the board, and it's Bostic who clears. Now Makaira Cook free to fire from range, nothing but nylon. Big three-pointer there for number three, Makaira Cook. Kyra, a player who's looking to get going a little bit this season, just averaging 11.7 this season, almost five points lower than her average a year ago. Now Schuler for the answer, rims out. Battle for the board, second chance, and that's Katarina Ferreira. She snagged seven offensive boards last time out against Arizona State. That's the most for a player six foot or shorter since 2015, as far as the Beavers are concerned, really crashes those O boards. Now Cook is going to take another one. You can't leave her that much space. Makaira Cook splashes two in a row. She's off to a hot start. Hot start for sure for Cook. Typically the Illini's number one option here on offense. Love to see her getting go get going early if you're an Illini fan. Now A.J. Marat looking to counter. That one rims out. Marat the glue for this team. The birthday girl tonight turning 22 years of age. Can't get that first shot to fall. Now here's Adalia McKenzie, assertive, but gets stuffed on the inside by Heidi. Fast break opportunity, but Ferreira thinks better of it. Resets to Schuler. Wise decision by the Beavers. The numbers weren't there. Schuler up top looking for some motion down low. Now going to work is Heidi. Flips over to Reese. And that's just too easy. A lot of height, a lot of size, and a lot of skill down low. Yeah, it looked to be a design set right there for the Beavers. That's definitely something that the Illini have to look out for here. That height definitely coming into play on that play right there. Makaira Cook operating as the primary ball handler. Schuler giving her some space as Bostic confident off the 17-footer. She rattles it home. That's been a big part of the evolution of her game, according to Coach Shauna Green. Really willing on those mid-range shots to put it up and put it in. Yeah, Kendall Bostic has certainly developed into a pretty good mid-range shooter here this season. That really allows the Illini to open up their offense and leads to easy buckets. Leave a foul away from the play. Much to the chagrin of some of this State Farm faithful. Second foul against Illinois. It'll stay down here. Take a look at Coach Scott Ruick. What a job that he has done. Just two wins shy for Oregon State of 300 in his career there as Barack can't get the short-range teardrop to fall. But a terrific career that he has had. Same can be said for Makaira Cook as she pulls up. 
And that one rims out. Maybe a bit of a heat check, but a pretty good look for Cook. Just couldn't get it to fall. Yeah, it was. I mean, if you're the Beavers, you definitely have to start poking up there on defense, on the perimeter on Cook. You cannot leave her that wide open. Now Schuler gallivanting inside. Offensive foul. Foul on the Beavers, number 32, Sela Heidi. It's going to go against Heidi first. on the moving screen. Coach Ruick has a lot of pride in this Oregon State team, an alumnus of the university himself. You can tell just how much he cares about these Beavers. Yeah, Cooper, I mean, you take a look at those numbers, just absolutely prolific as Kendall Bostick turns a three up there. Won't go, but he's over 500 victories in his 29th season of head coaching in total, 15th year with these Oregon State Beavers, and just the symbol of dominance and effectiveness as a coach for this team. Here's Marat once again, turning it loose from deep. Karam's off in the hands of Heidi, and Bostic hauls it in, plus the foul going against Heidi. A perfect example of the savviness down low from Kendall Bostic, even though she's conceding several inches. Here's Shauna Green, you have a look at the coach who is nothing short of a miracle worker, what she's done for this Illini program. Third season here with this team, third season. They've been ranked over 200 wins now for her career, spanning at Illinois and Dayton. Yeah, the hiring of Shauna Green is certainly going to be a big turning point in the reemergence of this Illinois women's basketball program. Nadalia McKenzie playing quickly, but gets whistled for the travel as she lost her balance. Rarely you see McKenzie out of control. She likes to play at a breakneck pace, but also very collected and having a terrific year so far this season. Beavers looking to get their offense going, trailing by four here early. Ferreira, show and go. Dipsy do, but it's violated for the double dribble there. Good defense moving the feet on the inside and help defense a big thing for the Illini. Illinois just swarming there, no open lanes. Yeah, team defense is going to have to be key here for the Illini. I expect to see a lot of switching and getting multiple bodies on these big players in the post for the Beavers like Reese and Heidi. Here's Cook, thinks about another triple, takes a stride in, mid-range J, and that's nothing but water once again. Makaira Cook off to a torrid start, give her eight points to the Illini's 10. Yeah, and Makaira Cook has just looked so fluid so far. Her ability to dribble straight into her jump shots really elevates her game. Ferrero with the answer, the impact transfer. Started Juco, ended up at Baylor for the last two seasons, and now making it happen in an Oregon State uniform. Biggest role of her career as Shoop Hill from the outside. And that one's money. Bring Shoop Hill, a true three-level scorer, showing off her multi-dimensional skill set there. Yeah, Shoop Hill's second three-pointer on the season. Coach Shauna Green has has reiterated time and time again that she knows that Shoop Hill has the ability to be a three-level scorer, like you said. Look for more perimeter shots down the season for Shoop Hill. Schuler has it purloined to the inside. Bostic goes up strong for the finish. And that's a huge part of the Illini offense, like I've been saying, getting out in transition, capitalizing on good defense, turning it into easy offense. A white-hot start for the Illini, 15-6 to six on top here early. Marat. Head of steam, fall away, can't get that one to go. Cold start for A.J. Marat, the glue player and the emotional leader for this team. Speaking of, there was the Illini's version of Dahlia McKenzie, the heart and soul of this team, gets that mid-range jumper to fall. Yeah, McKenzie's offense has really transformed a lot this season. She's used to getting to the rim and taking a lot of layups, but this season she's put emphasis on getting to the free throw line and hitting mid-range jumpers like that one. Three-pointer on the way and good for Ali Schimmel. This is a freshman there, very excited about a three-point specialist. That's the first three of her career. Bryant looking for the counter, can't get that one to fall. Ferreira clears another board. Schuler running this offense, taking her time and directing traffic. Illinois just so active on the defensive end, but Ferrero with the blow-by has the pass knocked down. Here's Cook out of the pack. Swarmed by a couple of defenders and a jump ball. Good hustle play recovering by Oregon State. This was a big point of emphasis. Was were Illinois going to be able to outrun these Beavers? Not the case so far on that play. No, definitely, definitely not, Ethan. 
We'll take a quick break here. Illinois off to a hot start. Makaira Cook is cooking indeed, but the Beavers stick. Don't want to call it a rivalry, but these two programs were certainly doing their thing and now meeting up once again. A hot start here for the Illinois Fighting Illini, shooting the lights out from the field. Seven of their first 12 have been good to go, and a big part of that has been Makaira Cook, a, a scorer who is off to a bit of a slow start. Not the case so far tonight. Yeah, back in 1996, the Illini won that matchup as well. They're off to a hot start and starting the series 2-0 against these Beavers. Like you said, hot start offensively. Lots thanks to the transition game. Gretchen Dolan on the pull-up can't get that one to fall. Genesis Bryant looking to feed her up. Bryant is on milestone watch tonight, just 12 points away from 1,000 in her Illini career. Fake on the baseline, Jay from Murat, a beautiful look for Reese, but she can't put it home. A couple of interior looks for Oregon State. They just haven't been able to capitalize. Now here's Gretchen Dolan. The youngster's taking a big step forward this year, playing with her hair on fire as Cook penetrates inside, but cannot finish. Board cleared by Reese. As you were talking about Gretchen Dolan, she was on the all Big Ten first team for freshmen last season, but has elevated her game even more so with these injuries that have been plaguing the Illini guards thus far. Dolan has had the opportunity to get an increased role and she's really capitalized on that. Foul on the interior, that one's gonna go against Corey Allen. As Ferreira stands strong on the inside. The foul's starting to become a, a little bit of a factor here early, third one against Illinois. Schuler to trigger, a confident Schimmel pulls up on the jumper offline, but Ferreira is hacked on the rebound. Big offensive rebound right there by Ferreira. I mean, we di we discussed her game in the open. She is only six feet tall and is a guard, but she does a tremendous amount of work in the rebounding game. She hauls in boards for these viewers. Five for her already today, two on the offensive side of things, so. Heart over height for Katarina Ferreira in her first season with the Beavers. Now here's Schuler gallivanting inside and gets that one to sift home. Nifty move right there from Schuler. You can really see her athleticism, like you were talking about earlier, be put on full display when she does those jump stops in her driving game. Here's McKenzie working around the Shoe Hill screen. Pull up Jay, rattles that one home. She said she wears 24 because it's the number of her favorite athlete, Kobe Bryant. That was very Kobe-esque right there, assertive scoring. It really was. Like Kobe, Adalia has really worked on establishing her mid-range game. That shot right there has been basically her signature shot thus far this season. Another look on the interior for A.J. Murat, but can't get that one to fall. Slow start for her, 0 for 5 from the field as she's whistled for the foul on the rebound. first, team's third. Just over a minute to play here in quarter number one. Illinois cruising, looking to defend that number 22 record and stay undefeated. But a lot of game left to go. Here's McKenzie, gets to the elbow once again, can't get that one to fall, and who else but Katarina Ferreira pulls it down. She can go 94 feet, instead dishes it to the outside, and a travel called against Schimmel. Yeah, one of the keys to the game, if the Beavers wanted to pull off an upset like this, would be to make sure that you don't let careless turnovers get in the way of offensive performance. And that's something they've been really struggling with so far. Their ball security has not been on point. And a big part of what Coach Ruick talked about, you need momentum on the road. And speaking of momentum, there's Brent Shoup Hill over the top of her defender for another deuce. Yeah, Shupil is a very versatile player. She contributes on both ends of the floor, and right there, she was making her impact known on the offensive side. Oregon State can hold for the final shot if they so choose. To the interior, there's Tiara Bolden. Can't get it to go, but a strong rebound and follow from Kelsey Reese. We know that she's got a strong stroke from downtown, shot 38% last year. That's third in the nation for players six, five and above, but so far she's making it work on the inside. Some good looks and finally a chance to reap the benefits here. Yeah, very impressive start so far for Reese on the offensive end.
Nails the first free throw, give her three points on the day, and it, it seems like it's going to be a big point of emphasis, as we could have guessed, Cooper, for Oregon State, forcing the ball inside where they've got a strong height advantage. Yeah, they, strong height advantage is something to be said for sure. It sh certainly looks like Coach Ruick has, has instilled his players. Both on the money from Reese. Now here's Bryant. What a maneuver, but she can't get that one to fall. Nonetheless, a strong opening quarter for Illinois, an eight-point Illini lead. Everything working so far for Illinois. The Beavers, though, trying to counter. We are in a fun Please one early on in Champaign. Second quarter on the horizon from State Farm Center in Champaign, eight-point Illini lead, and uh, Cooper O'Kelly, this is a couple of players here that have really excelled immediate impact out of the transfer portal, which you got to have in the modern game. Yeah, in the modern game, like you said, the transfer portal is such a big part. Jasmine Brown Hager for the Illini has been great off the bench, and uh, Katarina Ferreira for the Beavers has also been good acquired via the transfer portal. It just feels like one of those realities that if you're not exploiting the portal to some extent, you're going to struggle because somebody else is. So credit to both of these teams, not just doing so, but finding quality players that make an immediate impact as Zila Heidi tries to go over top, looking to pad that field goal percentage that has been so strong this year, but can't get that one to go. Instead, on the other end, it's Shoop Hill with the nifty little up and under. You love to see that. If you're an Illini fan, that move right there from Shoop Hill shows that the Illini aren't afraid of this height disadvantage. They're still going to attack these Beavers down low in the post. Schuler working against Makaira Cook. That's going to be a fun matchup to watch. Here's Tiara Bolden with the long range missile, but can't get that one to drop home. The Illini with several capable ball handlers. This time, McKenzie getting to stride down the court with it. Now Makaira Cook will call for a reset. Still 14 to work with on the shot clock. Here's Bostic free to fire. Oh, yeah. That mid-range shot from Bostic really gives the Illini the opportunity to open up their offense. Like I said before, really important that they're able to keep the, de the defense on their toes. Heidi gives to Bolden. Bolden pirouetting inside close quarters, and she gets that one to fall. What a deft maneuver on the inside by Tiara Bolden. Yeah, Tiara Bolden has really made an impact so far for the Beavers, providing um, a good amount of offensive expertise and also making an impact in the rebound category. Here's McKenzie to the interior, pitches that one up and through. And this game's turning into a track meet now. It really is. We knew coming into this one that the Illini especially and the Beavers love to get out in transition, like I've said time and time again. A track meet it has been. Here's the youngster Schimmel. Now Ferreira, she's going to let that one fly. No good. Board suctioned in by Adalia McKenzie. McKenzie flings inside. Bryn Shoop Hill going to chisel her way to the 10, but can't get that one to go through. Bolden's got the rebound. It's going to be important for the Illini not to get discouraged from misses down low. They always play big. They should play true to that strategy and not be discouraged by the height of these Oregon State players. Ferreira flying through to the basket, gets it to go, and the foul. What a delightful move on the interior from Ferreira. She's a little bit shaken up after this fantastic finish. Yeah, great take right there from Ferreira. Took a bit of a shot there, was a little slow to get up. Appears that she's all right now, getting ready to take her free throw. Ferreira, the native of Brazil, really had to climb her way up to the high division one level, started out and Junior college as she completes the three-point play, then a couple of seasons over at Baylor and now suiting up with the Beavers for the first time this year. She certainly found her place and role with this Beaver team. She's a bit of a spark plug, makes an impact on the hustle plays and getting scrappy. Makaira Cook looking for another one, can't get it to go, and another rebound by Ferreira. Ferreira, top of the key, hands off to Bolden. Now Schuler staring down Corey Allen. Wide open is Bolden. 
Clangs off the rim, a little bit too strong. Dangerous transition pass, but it's shepherded in by McKenzie. She tries to take it to the rack. Foul is called. Hectic basketball there. When Adalia McKenzie gets ahead of steam, when Adalia McKenzie gets ahead of steam like that, it's hard to stop her without committing a foul. That's one thing that McKenzie has done so well this season offensively is draw fouls and get to the free throw line. And, and a big part of the crux of this matchup here, that's something that Illinois has done so well, get other teams in foul trouble, get to the line, and something that Coach Scott Ruick of Oregon State said was going to be key for his squad. Do not let the Illini get a ton of shots at the foul line like they're so dangerous in doing. Here's Bryant. She gets repelled. Good defense by Kennedy Schuler as they'll reset. Ten to work with on the shot clock for Illinois. Bryant, the hesitation, dashing inside, flings it up, can't get it to go. Yet another rebound for Ferreira. Definitely. Count that as number nine on the day for her. Very impressive start here for Ferreira. We knew coming in that she makes a big impact in the rebound category, but I wasn't expecting something like this. Marat back out to Schuler, And here's Reese. Reese gets swarmed by the Illini. It was Dolan shifting over, and there's that help defense Coach Shauna Green has been talking about. Now Dolan on the other end, stuffed from behind, a clean block from Reese. That's what you can do when you've got that much length and awareness. Yeah, monster presences in the post, both from Reese and Heidi for the Beavers. Important for the Illini not to get discouraged from attacking the basket, though. Here's Schuler, just two points for her in the early going, averaging over 11 on the year. Now Ferreira already on double-double watch with seven points, nine boards, only 15 minutes in as Marat glides inside and finishes that one. Two points for the, bu the bucket getter who just turned 22 today. Very strong take right there from Marat. Uses her shoulder to kind of push Dolan out of her way and make for an easy bucket right there. Now Genesis Bryant probing the baseline. Dolan with the hesitation, misdirection, feeds Bostic, and that's cash money from mid-range. Yeah, once again, Bostic hitting from mid-range has been great to see for the Illini. After a strong little spree there from the Beavers, Illinois reasserting themselves up by nine. Reese dangerous from the outside. She'll line one up here, and it clangs off the back heel, no good. Illinois looking to work quickly in transition. Here's McKenzie gets to the spot and draws the contact against Marat. Yes, working her way into a starting position towards the end of the year. But in a podcast, she said in her heart she knew it was time to go back home and play in the state that made her fall in love with basketball. And that is what she did. She transferred into Oregon State this year and has been one of the many transfers making an immediate impact on this team. You can really see it here tonight as well. Back to you guys. Thank you, Ella. I think it's really uh, something that's not talked about enough, just how difficult, just how arduous, just how exigent it can be playing collegiate basketball at this level. And so being close to home, being close to your family, and coming back to the place where you first fell in love with the game, that's pretty beautiful stuff for Bolden. It's definitely beautiful and also very inspiring that Bolden was able to overcome some obstacles and some dark times and get through it all and get the opportunity to put on for her hometown area Oregon State team. Has been doing that so far, averaging just a shade under seven points a game off the bench as Adalia McKenzie snaps home the free throw to enlarge the Illini lead to 10. Just a tick over four minutes remaining here in half number one as McKenzie splashes the second. Cooper, it really feels like Oregon State's in need of a spark here for some momentum late in the quarter. What are you looking for to get them going? Yeah, I mean, if I were Oregon State, I would definitely look to, pay, to play through Kennedy Schuler here. She has the moves and the athleticism to get open, or Katarina Ferreira, that works just as well. Getting those easy layups right there on drives for the Beavers is something that could really revitalize their offense. Ferreira has been a blur all day long. 
Give her nine points and nine rebounds today. Almost like the Energizer Bunny suited up for Oregon State as Bostic burrows her way through on the interior and finishes that one for two. Yeah, at only 6'2", Kendall Bostic is a bit undersized for your traditional post player, but she makes up for it with heart and true aggression in the post. She does a great job of hauling rebounds and backing down defenders. Schuler posting up on the inside now. She gets a touch working against Makaira Cook. The youngster against the veteran can't get that one to go, but again, it's Ferreira in the mix. This time she's whistled for a foul, though. Yeah, a lot of fouls and a lot of turnovers so far for the Beavers. Something that Coach Ruick touched on when we spoke to him before the game. Something that he really wanted to avoid. If you want to be on upset watch against a better team, it's really hard to do so with so many careless mistakes. Really have got to keep it clean, especially against an Illinois team that we really haven't seen the best of what Illinois has to offer offensively, seeing a little bit more, a bit more of a glimpse of what this team's capable tonight. They're shooting over 50% from the field as they look to continue to accordion this lead going into the locker room. Yeah, I mean, so far Illinois has scored 81 and a half points a game. Very impressive that that's not even the full limit of their capabilities as Makaira Cook gets in there with a nice layup right there. Cook, a true three-level scorer in every sense of the word, puts home another one. Give her 10 on the day, and Oregon State is going to try to recollect themselves with a timeout. It's the Illini in control right now. Solid plays on both sides, but so far it's the Illini who have the lion's share of the positivity as they harbor a 13-point lead at home on Big Ten Plus. Here's Ferreira, top of the key, trying to dance her way inside, and a scrappy play by McKenzie, but it's staying at this end. Great example of McKenzie's hustle nature for this defense, uh, for the Illini. She makes an impact on both ends of the floor by diving around for balls and hustling to get possession. Schuler will trigger it in for Oregon State. All options covered for the moment. She has to fling it on out to Marat. Marat with just two points on one of six shooting so far today. Now here's Schuler tangos inside, but she is tabbed for the infraction, a charge against Kennedy Schuler. Yeah, it's something that Schuler has been doing all night, really, is using that arm to push out for a little bit of space on drives. That time just a little bit too obvious and too exaggerated to not get called for a foul. What's the delineating factor there, Cooper? What they're going to let go and what they're going to whistle? I mean, to me, it seems like once Schuler gets full extension of that arm, that's when you kind of have to draw the line as a referee. A little shove here and there with the elbow or shoulder, that will probably slide. Meanwhile, Katarina Ferreira has got her 10th rebound, just one point shy of a double-double as she is going to try and get it right here. And it's a bullseye from deep. Katarina Ferreira, 12 points, 10 rebounds. What an opus from her single-handedly keeping these Beavers in contention. First half double-double is very impressive from Ferreira. She, like you said, is the key reason as to why the Beavers have kept it close. But Bostic is extending the Illini lead with another mid-range jumper. And a big smile from her as she trots back down the floor. Kendall Bostic making it rain from the mid-range. Now here's Schuler, Heidi on the interior, and just too good of positioning and cohesion on that play. Seemed to be a little bit of miscommunication for the Illini defensive front right there. It seems like Bostic got a little bit caught up at the top of the key, giving Heidi a pretty easy bucket right there. Here's Bostic, and she nails another one from the elbow. Remarkable consistency from Kendall Bostic 
showing her dynamic nature here in this one. Yeah, Bostic is shooting the lights out right now, has only missed two shots, and has been on point from mid-range. Here's Schimmel confidently striding into that three, can't get it to go. Rebound cleared for the moment by Heidi. Now Ferreira got her defender in the air, tries to dish inside, but flashing in front was Dolan, and a foul called against Ferreira. That's a great example of strong team defense right there from the Illini. That's what you need to do no, if you want to compete in Katarina late game. Her second, team's fifth. In for Oregon State. Ferreira hard charging Number again. Zero, it's Golden. got a, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword, Cooper, when you play as hard as she does. You're going to get whistled for some fouls, but as you can see from the way that she has been scoring and rebounding so far, it's well worth it thus far. Definitely paying off so far for Ferreira. Gets called on that one, takes a little bit of time here on the bench, but she'll be back in it with that same ferocity in a little bit. Gretchen Dolan knocks down the free throw. Both of these teams perfect at the line so far. And perhaps I spoke a little bit too soon. The old announcer jinx one more time as Bolden clears the board off the miss from Gretchen Dolan. Dolan might have to have a word with you after this <laughs> one, Ethan. Here's Reese from way downtown. Splashdown on the triple. Kelsey Reese has got that element in her tool bag as that is a beautiful three-point stroke. And having the perimeter shot in your bag as a post player is so important because it allows you to make sure that your defender isn't cheating, staying down low. It gives you the ability to get open shots, but also gives you some opportunity to blow by for easy layups. Illinois trying to bleed some clock, ball in the hands of Bryant. She's still scoreless so far today. Not the case for Bostic. That bid for points 15, 16, and 17 comes up a little shy. One last shot for the Beavers here. Trailing by 10, looking to kindle up some momentum. Here's Reese, hands to Schuler. Schuler puts it up, no good. And that'll conclude matters in this first half. A thriller so far, a game that as we surmise might happen here, Cooper, is playing at a very fast pace. But need to be more disruptive, but the Illinois is shooting lights out and there's nothing they can do about that. However, offensively, he recognizes that they are a new team and everything is basically trial and error out there. But they just need to execute more and be more efficient on offense. That's all for me, back to you guys. Well, for the way that this first half has played out, Cooper, as well as Illinois has shot, you look up at the scoreboard, it's only a 10-point deficit. The Beavers are still very much in this thing. Yeah, they definitely are. I mean, this second half could go very drastically different ways for both these teams. I think in order to continue their success, the Illini need to continue a balanced offensive load. Bostic, Cook, McKenzie, they've all had big impacts, and they need to continue to spread the wealth offensively. Here's Cook, finds the elbow and rattles it home, and we've seen that movie before. That move is playing on repeat for Illinois, especially for Cook. The mid-range game so far for Cook and also Kendall Bostic has been lethal. On the interior, it's Ferreira. She was held by McKenzie. Ferreira, just talk about uh, disruptive players. We hear that term a lot on defense. That's what Ferreira has been offensively, just finding a way to shred this Illini defense so far. And that's super important if you're the Beavers, who have come out a little bit flat offensively. You need to look for Ferreira to continue to slice through defenders and get to the rack. Here's Schuler, just two points for her so far. Tangos and flips it out to Reese off the front rim, no good, and Cook is going to try and get out and run. Cook to the interior, Bostic, what a magnificent dime. Makaira Cook making it happen, scoring and now distribution. That was a thing of beauty. What a great pass right there from Cook. Cook gets a lot of love for all her scoring prowess, but what doesn't really get talked about as much as it should is her emergence as a facilitator for the Illini. She's done a great job of dishing out beautiful assists like that one. Such a clever player as there's a foul against the Illini as Schuler was trying to penetrate, but averaging four assists per game this year, just down from 4.4 last year, as you see, obviously, clear contact on McKenzie. I think if you're Oregon State, something you want to look forward to is getting Schuler more involved in the offense going forward. She's typically a double-digit scorer by averages, but has only scored two points so far. Definitely want to see her get more involved for the Beavers. Another foul, and that's three now against McKenzie, so she will have to substitute out. 
But uh, I like that you bring that up. That's a player that Coach Scott Ruick said is somebody who's really emerged not just as a facilitator and a defender, but as a scorer. We haven't seen that dynamic from her yet tonight. There's Schimmel trying to get a three-pointer off, but it's stifled by Bryn Shoup Hill. Now Genesis Bryant over to Gretchen Dolan. Dolan hits the accelerators and puts the sweet touch on that jumper. One thing Dolan does so well is when she has a full head of steam and she's heading towards the basket, she still has the ability to stop on a dime, which confuses defenders and often leads to open looks like that one. Schuler to the interior, and what a nifty finish there. Soft Schuler. touch off the glass. Maybe that'll get Schuler going. She's got four points now on the evening. Definitely need more of that. Schuler has such an impressive ability to be able to use her handles to get down low and get easy layups. Kyra Cook sweeps the leg, dishes to Dolan. She can't get that one to fall. Good hustle, though, by Shoup Hill to corral the rebound. I've talked a lot about how Adalia McKenzie has been a scrappy hustle player for the Illini, but Shoe Hill does a fair amount of that as well. She's great tracking down rebounds and loose balls. Kelsey Reese grabs the board off the miss by Genesis Bryant, and now some discombobulation. Illinois comes up with it, and Bostic going from coast to coast. Give her 18 on the evening, leading all scorers so far in this one. Yeah, and all of her buckets have just seemed so easy and free-flowing. Bostic has a great job of letting the game come to her, something that provides a sense of stability for this offense. Marat trebuchet is up that, tree, that three, rebound. Lassoed back in by Schuler on the tip out. Marat around the screen, there's Ali Schimmel from range, can't get it to fall, hit her first career, career three earlier tonight, but cannot get that one to find its way through. Now here's Shoup Hill on the interior and Cook had the right idea, just a little bit shy on the execution. Yeah, but I do like that Cook is willing to make those aggressive passes. It often leads to, when they're converted, easy buckets. So I really like seeing that aggressiveness as a facilitator from Cook. Here's Schuler knifing her way through the D. Illini doing a good job keeping it on the perimeter, but that does not matter. It is on the money from Katarina Ferreira from South America to Central Illinois. It doesn't matter where she is. She's a bucket everywhere on the globe. Yeah, that is a tough shot. There's a hand in her face the whole way through that one. Very impressive. Now Dolan forcing her way through and has that pull-up J in her back pocket again. Like I said, Dolan just has such an impressive ability to let the game play slow. She doesn't rush on offense. She's able to get down low easily and swiftly, but not at a super fast pace. Here's Reese on the turnaround. Can't get that one to fall. Inhaling the board is Shoup Hill. Blinken, you'd miss it, but it's now a 15-point Illini advantage as they're shooting a blistering 56.4% from the field. Yeah, like Ella said in her conversation with Coach Ruick, not much you can do if you're the Beavers if the Illini are shooting such lights out basketball like they are right now. Dolan from the backside keeps this possession alive. The Champagne crowd is loving it as Cook takes it all the way to the rack. Wow, what a drive right there from Makaira Cook using the handles and shiftiness to get down there and get up a tough play. Well, Makaira Cook, the hesitation, the dipsy do, and the authoritative finish, and she'll have a chance for a three-point play. We talked about her slow start to the season. Cooper, I think it's fair to declare that Makaira Cook is well and truly back. She's definitely turning it on right now in this one. On that last play, Kelsey Rees hand in her face. It doesn't matter. Cook can still finish in the face of tough defensive presences. Three throws off the mark, but nonetheless, 14 points. On the day from Cook, it has been her and Kendall Bostic with 18 leading the way. Now here's Schuler, free reign to the rack, and she scoops that up and through, plus the contact. Kennedy Schuler not backing down one bit as she manages the difficult finish. A nice little scoop and score right there for Schuler. She uses different angles while attacking the basket, which allows her to get a little bit of separation and avoid a lot of shot contests. Had that arm hinged all the way out there to the left and still got it to go. Can't get the free throw to droop down, however. Here's Dolan in transition to Bryant, and she sinks the three. Genesis Bryant, her first points 
of the evening. Our colleague Genesis Bryant, I might add. You can tune in and hear her on Big Ten Plus as the analyst for the men's game, Illinois versus Maryland Eastern Shore tomorrow. So in that very seat that you're sitting, Cooper, she's pretty good, but we already know she's pretty good on the floor as well. Finally gets on the score sheet today. Yeah, our coworker Genesis Bryant, her three-point shooting, it's a big, big point of emphasis for this Illini team. As you can see here, nice pass from Cook to Bostic and some shifty moves from Dolan, but Bryant's three-point shooting ability is something that brings life to the Illini offense. It matters a lot. This game has opened up even more in the second half so far, it feels like, Cooper. We knew that this was going to be a, a really intense, fast pace. That's what Illinois wanted out of this one. It feels like it's been even more breakneck speed here in the second stanza. Yeah, it really has. And even on simple rebounds, the Illini offense is able to turn up the pace, mainly fueled by you know facilitators like Makaira Cook, like Adalia McKenzie running the floor. It doesn't need to be a steal for things to turn into a track meet for the Illini. Those things on the floor for his squad. Yeah, I mean, you can really see in the effort that these players coming from overseas have made on the Beaver offense and defense. One thing that makes this even more impressive, like we talked earlier, Coach Ruick said that his team, despite being a bunch of new faces, has formed a really good bond together. And it doesn't matter where they come from. These Beavers have stuck together, and you can see it on the floor. They play as a unit. Uh, it's really a beautiful thing, Cooper. The language of basketball really unites everybody here and has certainly been the case for this Oregon State squad. You've got some hometown players like we talked about, Tiara Bolden and several players from the state of Oregon. Then you've got players from every geographical location imaginable, and uh, it's a lot of fun to see how it's come together. Meanwhile, Kennedy Schuler is able to sift that first free throw shot home. Schuler, you mentioned she had to get going. That's now seven points for her as she tries to spur a comeback for the Beavers, make it eight as she pads down the second free throw. Yeah, I mean, one thing that the Beavers should think to start implementing in their offense, in my opinion, in this one, is just attacking these Illini defenders. They've done a good job of getting fouls called. They need to keep doing that and get into the free throw line. It's Kendall Bostic. Goes up strong against Kelsey Reese for the easy finish. Concedes a little bit of height, but it doesn't matter there as she droops over that beautiful teardrop shot. Now here's Schuler, dishes it over to Reese. Perimeter movement as the birthday girl Marat, 22 years old today, tries to work her way to the inside. Instead, a dish to Schuler, just too strong on that one as Brent Shoup Hill corrals the rebound. Yeah, so far this season, the Beavers have not done a great job from behind the arc. They're shooting a low percentage in this one and throughout the whole season, something that they should, they would love to change. Oh, the Beavers number one. Cook is a little bit shaken second. up after that Jesus take. It looks like she took a while to get up and get like ready for this free line. throw, Ethan. Shooting Another strong two. move, though, from Cook. And she had a beautiful dribbling package that got her way to the foul line. and. Hits another one, and Makaira Cook just seems to be firing on all cylinders so far in this one. That free throw puts her up to 15 on the day. Make it 16 for Makaira. Makaira is another one of these three-level scores that you don't really see that often in the college game. I mean, she has a lot of ability to score from wherever she wants on the floor. Here's Reese from range, but it rattles out trampolining in and out of the bucket on that one. It was halfway down, but just wouldn't fall. Now Cook, confident stroke. Off the mark, just barely. Rebound cleaned out of there by Reese. Schuler flips it inside, looking for Murat. Interrupted, now Bolden has to turn tail. Now the veteran Murat directing traffic. Bolden. Looking to generate some space, working against Bostic. To the exterior, Schimmel puts it up and it's short. Hauled in by Kendall Bostic. We love to see the ball movement there from the Beavers, but I really think that was a great defensive possession by the Illini. And by Kyra Cook, somebody get the fire extinguisher. She is an incendiary right now. Rack up two more for Makaira Cook. Here's 
Here's Marat, flips over to Reese, looking for the counter, it won't fall. Illinois going quickly, touchdown pass to Boston for the finish. That one almost went the full length of the floor, a beautiful feed and a beautiful finish. And this lead continues to balloon. It's up to 24 in favor of the Illini. I mean, that's just another example of the Illini inventing new ways to score. How do you stop that? I, that's a full-length pass. That's not even the transition game. That's just inventing a possession out of nothing. Marat can't get the three to go, so Cook is going to take her time now. Kyra Cook working around the horn. Bostic confident from that spot all day. Give her two more. I mean, that's something that the Beaver defense needs to pick up on. I mean, that has been Bostic's bread and butter here tonight, these mid-range buckets. And she's basically been uncontested on every one. Can't stop, won't stop. Make it 24 on the day for Kendall Bostic. The Illini are cruising up by a bundle right here on Big Ten Plus. Ball with some of these long travel schedules has not been easy for these teams to adapt. No, I mean, think about it. If you're the Illini, on certain weeknights, they have to travel across the country to the West Coast, take on teams like USC, like Oregon. Like Oregon State has made the trip over here. It's definitely a lot to adjust to, especially as a college athlete. Now switching gears, Cooper, a lot of interesting themes in this game. One of those has been Sela Heidi. We have not seen much of her, particularly in the second half, just 10 minutes today for her, and only two points scored in this competition. Surprising to see Oregon State really only go with their one big in Reese as Marat slots her way through for the bucket. But uh, you're talking about a dominant player, fourth in the in the country in field goal percentage entering tonight, has really not seen a lot of run. Yeah, I mean, an 11 points per game score, eight rebounds per game. She's been dominant for the Beavers this season. I think one indication as to why she might not be seeing a lot of minutes right now is the fact that with the high pace of this Illinois offense, it's hard for a bigger player like Heidi to keep up with that. It might just be that Coach Rack is trying to go with a bit of a small ball lineup to keep up with the tempo of this game. Second foul of the day for Tiara Bolden, and that'll send Genesis Bryant to the line. 991 points up to the minute in her Illinois career. First free throw is good as she inches closer to that terrific milestone. Talking about a player who really didn't do a whole lot in an NC State uniform, under 80 points in her career there, and just has been a burgeoning star from the moment that she set foot on campus here in Champaign. Yeah, she really has. A lot of credit to Coach Green. You've seen that all these transfer players and freshmen that come into the Illinois program the past few years, she finds a way to unlock their potential, just like Bryant has done. Reese fighting for that rebound, but there's Haven Smith able to wall up and nullify it there. Seems like many times Kelsey Reese has been right there, just has been unable to finish it off despite good positioning. Yeah, it's tough here for Reese. I mean, that's someone that you want to see get going offensively if you're the Beavers. This lead is getting a little bit out of hand now, but would certainly help keep things close if Reese were able to get going. Mismatch for Bryant working against Reese, and she draws the foul. Couldn't quite caterpillar it up and in over the rim, but she'll head to the line for another pair. Genesis Bryant has really put her elusive scoring nature on display here tonight. While it might not have totally shown up in the box score yet, she does a good job of moving around off ball, creating opportunities for her for her teammates, and leading to great spacing for this team. Knocks down another foul shot. Bring that tally up to six on the day. Halfway to the 12 she needs to reach the 1,000 point threshold in an Illinois uniform. And there's one more for Genesis Bryant. Couple of substitutions into the game here. Chloe Vathina, the freshman from Spain is out there. A player who nearly made the U18 team for the 2024 Eurobasket tournament. Was one of the last cuts, so a lot of talent for her. And Corey Allen in for Illinois as Marat. Drains that one from long range for Oregon State. Looking to get her stroke going as she comes alive here in the second half. Yeah, that's another player that 
Oregon State would love to get going offensively. Marat, like we've said, is a great leader for this team, but making an impact on the offensive end would be great going forward. Here's Bryant, quick trigger, three, flips up out of there. Now Marat with the board, seven points here on her 22nd birthday. Reese confident, three-point stroke, a little bit short. Illini can hold for the final shot now. Yeah, Reese so far, I mean, we've talked about how she's one of the best three-point shooting uh, post players in college basketball, but tonight, one for six, not a great start. The champagne crowd coming alive as Bryant will handle. In her bag, to the rim, flings it up there, no good, as the third quarter is in the books, and the Illini have taken full command over the Beavers in this one. 69-44, infinitely veteran type of player with a heck of a lot of spring in her step. It's fun to watch this Illini duo, Genesis Bryant and Makaira Cook, both capable of taking over games. They're only five foot six apiece, kind of indifference, or rather listed at five six. Always have to specify that, but indifference to an Oregon State team. Their two stars down low, Sela Heidi and Kelsey Reese, six seven and six five, respectively. So interesting to see the disparate styles as Cook takes a breather. She's got 18 on the night so far. Back in the game is Heidi. Looking to get it to her are the Beavers, but can't do so there. Here's Schuler staring down Dolan. And a foul away from the ball called against Illinois. Foul on Illinois number 25, David Smith. I'll just see the aggressiveness Teamsters. out of this Illini defense. I mean, you see the scoreboard, it's a, it's a bit of a large disparity, but not letting off the gas pedal is something that's super important, especially in college sports when, you know, rankings are very subjective and could come down to each specific game and Here's Ferreira, like a wild bull on the inside, plunges through and dishes the dime to Heidi. Yeah, matchup to watch right here for freshman Haven Smith for the Illini is, is she gonna be able to match up with such a big player like Heidi? Smith, the only center listed, the only player listed as a center on the Illini roster has an opportunity to step in and get some minutes and provide a big post presence. Here's Ferreira falling away on the run. Can't get that one to go. Rebound dragged down by Corey Allen. Allen up ahead to Dolan. Here's Gretchen Dolan. Allen free to fire. Can't get that one to go. Allen, a fun player to watch, though. A real basketball prodigy. She had her first offer to play collegiate ball at age 11. She was probably still holding her parents' hands while she was crossing the street. She already had a chance to go play college basketball. It's remarkable stuff. Yeah, it really is. I mean, Cordy Allen has been really good off the bench for the Illini. Something that's been so crucial for the team's success so far has been these bench players like Allen, like Dolan, like Jasmine Brown-Hager, who we haven't seen tonight. But the, the three of them have really been able to elevate this team's offense. And, you know, depth, Ethan, is something that is really going to come into play when your team is dealing with injuries like the Illini have so far. Meanwhile, there's that physical presence of Sela Heidi cleaning that one up on the inside and one for the six foot seven standout on the inside, and she converts the three-point play Bit of a tough night for Heidi, but she was able to give a little bit of workout to the youngster Smith, get her total up to seven points on the evening. Now here's Dolan, she's got some space and hits Dolan. that one from inside the paint. I love how Gretchen Dolan is able to play so smooth and fluid. She really does what she needs to do in her own way to get the ball going offensively. Drags down the board there on the miss from Marat and out of control is Genesis Bryant. It'll be a turnover. A little bit of contact there, but not enough for a foul, according to the officiating crew tonight. Did not seem like Genesis Bryan agreed with that call, but is able to keep it under control. Here's the Spanish native, Athena. Over to Schuler working against Schuphill. Bit of a size discrepancy here as the foul is whistled against Schuphill. Savvy play from Kennedy Schuler, just kind of baiting Schuphill into the contact. Yeah, Schuler's lateral quickness is something that helps her so much, which you can see on plays like that. Because she's so fast, it's hard for defenders to keep up with her without fouling. Here's Marat rises up and gets that one to go, and an emphatic clap for her after the bucket. She really is 
the emotional leader on this team and getting going here in the second half. This is somebody that uh, Coach Scott Ruick really did not have a, enough good to good things to say about her. It felt like everything he said was just bleeding positivity, and she is a terrific player for this squad as Bryant gets the soft touch and gets that one to dip down and in. Yeah, Maura Murat, like you were saying, Ruick could not understate the impact she has on this team. You know. She, she's a returner. She didn't have as much of a role last year offensively, but this year has seen her numbers skyrocket as she's getting used to having more touches. Ferreira has it poked away by Adalia McKenzie, but it'll stay at this end with the Beavers. Yeah, Shauna Green, head coach Shauna Green for the Illini prides her teams on being strong, defensive-minded teams. This is something that has really shown through tonight as they've been great at limiting this Beaver offense. Schuler with a tough fall away jumper, but Heidi's got the board, pitches it up as the shot clock expires. And it looks like a shot clock violation before the contact. Looks like the Beavers are shifting here to a full court press or trap of some sorts. Coach Ruick looking to you know, change something up, get something to work maybe for this Beaver defense. And not to say that the 22-point lead is completely insurmountable, but these are going to be valuable reps for both of these squads here early in the year, even if the result holds and the Illini maintain a commanding lead. Still a lot of the starters out there for both sides. Kendall Bostick back in the game. Here's Bryant to McKenzie. Bryant, free to fire and hit. Genesis Bryant. That's a great shot right there by Brian. Two different hands in your face, it doesn't matter. She's still able to knock down tough contested shots. And that's the one right there, Cooper O'Kelly. Make it 1,000 in her Illini career. That three brings her to 12 on the day. And what a sensational two plus years she's had in the orange and blue. Traveling. Traveling violation against the Beavers and Really can't say enough about Genesis Bryant. I mean, a player who averaged just over two points a game, did not start a single contest at NC State, thought about walking away from the game of basketball instead. Shauna Green courts her to come here to Illinois, and the rest is history. Yeah, she's done a great job coming into her own here in the orange and blue. I mean, she's, she's a catalyst for this offense in so many ways, bringing the ball up on offense, spreading the wealth, hitting clutch threes. She's been great. As we see a hustle play right there from Adalia McKenzie. Something she does so well, Ethan, is dive on loose balls. And McKenzie and A.J. Marat getting down there on the ground. And that's really emblematic of the way that those two play. Players that just pump so much energy into their respective teams. Even a game that's a 25-point margin right now. Bodies hitting the floor, scrapping for every single possession. Yeah, I mean, you just love to see players have such love for the game. And you really love to see, for McKenzie especially, she plays with such ferocity where she doesn't give up on any play. The officials taking a second here, perhaps uh, conversing about where that possession arrow is pointing. Looks like for the moment it's... Genesis Bryan out there to inbound as we await confirmation here. 25-point Illinois lead, 76-51 with just over six minutes to go in this one. But interesting to see both of these teams still with a lot of the A unit out there. These are valuable reps, not just to get some players that don't get a lot of playing time so far in there, but also chance for the starters to get rhythm as the season goes on. Yeah, for sure. I mean, these reps, like you said, are super valuable. Coach Green has talked time and time again that because of injuries, a lot of her practice plans have gone awry. She hasn't been able to run the drills that she's wanted, but getting game reps like this is just as valuable. And when we talked to both of these coaches, they both had tremendous praise for the organization they were going against as Bryant pitches up another three, can't get that one to fall, but... This is really a iron sharpens iron type of a deal here. Two teams that have got great pedigree. The Illini is a little bit more recent pedigree. Oregon State building up to what this unit is capable of as Bethina gets that one to go. But 
both of these teams really looking to build on the seasons they've been having and going up against another tough opponent can help you jumpstart your year as you get ready for conference play. Yeah, I mean, I really like what you said with iron sharpens iron, Ethan. I mean, especially if you look at the coaches, Green and Rec are both looked at in the game of women's college hoops as great coaches that provide so much impact to their teams and are big difference makers. Yet another rebound there for Katarina Ferreira as it's nearly poached on the sideline by Cook will stay with Oregon State. But Ferreira, I mean, six out of 10 from the field, two out of four from three, 15 points, 11 rebounds. She got off to a torrid start and has really had a phenomenal competition here tonight. Looking to add to it right now from long range. Can't get it to go, but Heidi has the board, puts it right back up and in. And that's just size and physicality and knowing how to use it. A really refined scorer this year that's been a big stride for Sela Heidi. Yeah, I mean, that's the type of impact that Heidi can have on every play. Getting offensive rebounds like that really could provide life to a Beaver offense that's gotten off to a bit of a rough start this season. Getting second chance buckets like that is a great way to score. Cook dancing on the interior and gets that ball away jumper to go. Another bucket for Makaira Cook. That puts her up at the 20 point threshold today. One of two Illini to surpass that plateau. Bostic has got 24. Now wide open from range is Marat and she sinks one from downtown. A.J. Marat slowly but surely starting to come alive. She's got 12 second on the team. Yeah, especially in this fourth quarter, I feel like Marat has done a great job extending her range and hitting those three-pointers. It's something that is really important for this Beaver offense that we didn't see much of tonight as Kendall Bostic gets the tough and one bucket to fall. And one for Kendall Bostic. The pump fake and the finish, just so technical on the interior, as usual, Cooper. Yeah, super impactful for Bostic to get these ages of the Illini out here, letting loose and having a good time, enjoying a significant 22-point Illini edge right now. It's always such a great vibe here in State Farm Center, and these fans are loving it, but this is just one game in a very long season as you have a look at what's coming up for these Beavers likely falling to one and four. They'll regroup. Not easy to do so as they face off with UConn on Monday. That terrific program. That is going to be a really difficult road to find their way back. But Coach Scott Ruick, a guy who said this program has nothing to prove. They know what they're capable of. And just getting this group up to speed, uh, I'm sure really enjoying challenging his program right now. Yeah, 100%, and that was something he talked, uh, he touched on when he spoke with us. He doesn't mind his players going up against tough competition. Like you said with that expression, iron sharpens iron. That's been great for the Beavers to get experience playing tough teams. Marat confident on the pull-up, gets that one to fall. AJ Marat, we haven't really seen her in this role as a player that takes over offensively, but she leads the team with 14 field goal attempts, has gotten six of them to drop home, leading the team in minutes per game, and now it seems like in what will perhaps be her final college season is somebody who really is capable of taking over as a number one option. Yeah, I mean, Marat getting an opportunity to do so hasn't been something, as it isn't something that's that easy to adjust to. It took her a little bit to adjust to her usage rate spiking, and she's really come into her own as a scorer this season. Meanwhile, Adalia McKenzie swoops in for the board. That's something that Coach Ruick said, we can't be allowing a lot of those offensive rebounds because then you got to lock in for another 20 seconds, and then you got to deal with that. Kendall Bostic, once again, she's got 29 for Illinois. Not, not much you can do right now except shake your head watching Kendall Bostic play. She has just been electric on these mid-range jumpers and the Beaver defense has been leaving her wide open. Fall away no good for Marat and that is a new career high for Kendall Bostic. The previous high 27, she's got 29 tonight. And that's after playing just 18 minutes and scoring 25 against Lemoyne on Monday. She is red hot, truly taking over. Just a player who finds ways to get better each and every season, even in her fifth year in the Big Ten. Yeah, and Bostic has overcame some adversity for sure. Like we touched on earlier, she's undersized at the forward position, but it just doesn't matter. She is able to get down in the post and make things happen for the Illini. Just an absolute opus from Kendall Bostic. 29 points on 14 of 17 shooting, eight rebounds as well for her. 
She's played 31 minutes tonight. I mean, Cooper just has been a joy to watch on both ends of the floor. We thought this might be a tough matchup for her going up against 6'7 and 6'5 in the post in Heidi and Reese. Instead, she has handled that challenge so adeptly today. I mean, she really has. This game has just been a true testament to how Bostic's heart overcomes opponent's height. Her uh, aggression and effort on these quick plays in the post, getting rebounds that maybe she shouldn't be getting over taller defenders, doesn't really matter to her. She's done a great job. And a lot of those buckets coming from the mid-range as well, not a one-dimensional post player. She's really been making it rain from 15 to 17 feet. Coach Shauna Green said that's been a big area of improvement in that game. It's been on full display tonight. Yeah, I mean, it really has. And I touched on it time and time again that that opens up your offense. Being a big that can, you know, score from multiple levels, keeps defenders honest and make sure they don't key in on one aspect of their game. Kennedy Schuler can't get this one to go as Corey Allen pounces on the board. Two minutes remaining here in Champaign. Still a lot of starters for both teams out there. Trying to take advantage of every last minute. Bryant dishes inside. Bostic sensing 30. She's got it. A 30-piece nugget from Kendall Bostic. Make it 31 in total for the Illini star. Her magnum opus in terms of scoring and what a curtain call she'll receive from this crowd. Yeah, and Shauna Green was quick to try and get a timeout right there from the referees. Wanted to get the opportunity to give Bostic her flowers. Uh, such a special moment. Somebody who started out at Michigan State, that was not the fit there as she rattles that one home. And uh, just a, a marvelous moment for a player who has given everything to this program. Somebody whose work ethic has been complimented uh, so often and so profusely. Genesis Bryan and her media availability earlier this week said, yeah, she's not flashy, but nobody works harder than her on and off the floor. And all that work paying huge dividends tonight. 100%. I mean, it's clear to see how much effort and how much passion Bostic has for the game of basketball and for these orange and blue colors of the Illini. Here's Bethina trying to take advantage of her opportunity. Had some decent run in the second half as she slithers through to the inside and draws the contact. Some new faces here for the Illini as the freshman duo, Haven Smith and Mia Zanira, both out getting some minutes here. Also checking in for Oregon State, it's Susanna Jetta as her first action. The redshirt junior who hails from Columbia as a couple more players. Get cheers rained down on them with Bryn Shoup Hill exiting. Bethina Erratic on the first free throw. And still some incentive here for this Illini crowd with that free McNugget promotion if the opponents miss two in a row. So they're still up in arms, but Athena playing the heel. She's not allowing the free grub to this Illinois faithful. They've had enough fun today, she says. I think the crowd will be more than happy with this result, even if they don't get to bring home some nuggets. The Illini have had such a great start to their season so far, and you know their 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 score dis or point differential has really reflected that. Another big win in coming here. Here's Marat. She's got 14 on the day. Schuler probing, scoping, flipping outside. Jeppes got it. Susanna Jeppes nails that triple. The Colombian international at U15 and player who redshirted last year after coming off a JUCO career. That's got to feel good for her, nailing the three. Most definitely, and it came off a great pass right there from Kennedy Schuler. Schuler has this natural ability to be a facilitator. She does a great job of finding open teammates and creating looks. Corey Allen off the mark. Now Schuler scanning for options, always playing with her head up. Such a tremendous demeanor for her out there on the floor. Now Marat, jab step, inside, flings it up and in, make it 16. Now for A.J. Marat, that makes her the leading scorer on the day for the Oregon State Beavers, but it is all over but the shouting, and Cooper, there will be plenty of shouting from this Champagne faithful. What a sound victory here for Illinois. They cruise in an 85-point opus.
And as the buzzer sounds, they'll improve to 5-0 on the season with another terrific effort. Yeah, huge start to the season for the Illini. Continue that undefeated streak in a very monster way here tonight. Like we've been saying, they did a great job of getting out in transition, getting easy buckets, forcing turnovers. It's really, they did a great job of stifling the Beavers on all fronts. And we know this Illini team has got plenty of depth, but it really tonight was all about that law firm of Bryant, Cook, and Bostick. They did a lot of the heavy lifting for Illinois so far tonight. Yeah, they really did. I mean, obviously what jumps off the page to both of us is Kendall Bostick's performance. 30 plus points is ab 30 plus points is ab Round it down. Strong on that, I know. 